the season finale of In Flight Coffee, episode 106. You're not going to want to miss it. Missouri Nation, today is a great day. I mean, for, for some of us. Some of us are a little sad, I know, about the season finale of In Flight Coffee. Who, Hunter, Eric Pittman, step in my honesty corner this early. Are you guys like a little bit, a little bit sad? I, I just want, maybe, maybe Eric could do like a, a stand in In Flight Coffee, I'm thinking. But anyways, good to see you. Hey, Telvin. Hey, Jimmy. Good to see you on here. Jennifer, great to see you on here. Episode 106. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? 106 Saturdays in a row. That's the, that's the crazy part about it. 106 Saturdays in a row. I promise you, I promise you, we will bring the, uh, the wisdom. We will, we will drop, we'll drop a little nugget of wisdom today. I, I, I promise that. I promise that. Uh, let's give some shout outs here. Uh, John Dela Cruz, uh, Adam, good to see you. Hey, Seuss, good to see you. Felix, what's happening? Uh, again, for those of you just ho hopping on here, this is the season finale, episode 106 of In Flight Coffee, just so uh, myself, my lovely wife Magda, and I can uh, be, uh, be a family with the little ones and everything else and enjoy our summer together. So appreciate you all uh, doing that. Carl, hey, hey, Mr. Dreamy, right back to you. Coach Ray, John, good, uh, good seeing you all. Bill Campbell, good to see you. Thanks for the email, by the way. Hey, let's make some coffee and then let's, uh, let's share some aviation wisdom. Those of you who are in-flight coffee veterans like David, like Telvin, like Danielle, James Fellows, and Mr. Ragsdale, and many, many others, I'm just reading the names off the top, like Megan there, you know the drill. I need you to tell me, where are you watching from and how is the weather using only emojis? Oh, John Dela Cruz is already ahead of the game. By the way, John Dela Cruz, congratulations on all your success, my friend. I love seeing all those pictures in the nation and everything else. Congratulations on your success. Thanks to Tim Sexton for sending the coffee, Jennifer C. Gates for sending the Chemex. They will be used. Even, even during the summer. Because you know, I told Magda, I said, we're taking the summer off, we're gonna need something to do on Saturdays. And she goes, yeah, we're just gonna relax and you know, be with the kids and everything else. I said, I, I think we could relax better if we had a boat. Uh, that's why I told her, I just said, we really, we really need a boat. What do you think, Jennifer Johnson? Should we buy a boat? Tell Magda that we, that we need to. Marilyn, you're right, it is, it is sunny. Um, Anna, good to see you. Colin, Ron, windy in Boston, huh? We were supposed to have this front go through, but it just mysteriously disappeared. Um, with all of that. Danielle in Chicago, sunny with, with like one cloud there. Dr. Bill, rainy. Yeah, we're going to look at weather here in just a bit, oddly enough. Stephanie, partly cloudy in the old, uh, the old DTO. Jesus in Puerto Rico. Um, who's, hold on, someone said yes, I need Ron G said, yes, I need a boat, Magda. Screenshot that, save that. Ron G, I'm holding you to it. You said I need a boat, uh, so I'm going to get a boat. Let's make some coffee. David said, clear, unlimited visibility in Michigan. We're going to make some coffee here, and then we are going to share some, hopefully what you perceive as aviation wisdom. Hey, Jeff, good to see you. Hey, the real Mike Jordan, good to, good to see you. Not to be confused with Michael Jordan. Hey, um, I want to play a game real quick here, too, uh, as well. By the way, David said, just came back in from the lake from cleaning the boat. It's fun, but work. I was thinking I was going to outsource that to the kids, David. That's what I was really hoping for. Hey, question for you all, and we will give away, uh, I don't have an in-flight coffee mug here to show, but we have those amazing uh, in-flight coffee mugs. Um, Magda's going to run and get one, but let me ask the question first so the comments can flow in. I have a question for you here. Put it in the, this is how it's going to work. You're going to put something in the chat that I ask. The, the comment that gets the most likes is going to win this in-flight coffee mug. So here is the question. Put it in the chat, your favorite in-flight coffee moment. You've got 106 episodes to choose from. Put it in the chat and then scroll through the chat and look at those on YouTube and on Facebook. We're, we're streaming simultaneously right now. Go ahead and, and throw a thumbs up to your favorite 
in-flight coffee moment from the 106 episodes, right? That's why, and then whoever, I'll look at it after the show is done. Uh, whoever does that, I will go ahead and I will send this amazing, amazing mug to that Magda is about to show to you when she stops running around like a crazy lady here, this beautiful in-flight coffee mug complete with all the in-flight coffee inside jokes and everything else. You, you, you're gonna want one, you're gonna want one. Whoever gets, whoever gets the most, the most likes. Wow, I forgot about Jason Shepard bingo, Eric Pittman. Thank you, Eric Deagle, for such a good idea on the Jason Shepard. Apparently, I say a lot of the same things um, over and over. I, I, don't, I don't know. Hey, Holly, good to see you, Holly. We're playing a game. Uh, favorite in-flight coffee memory or moment um, and put it in the chat, those with the most likes on YouTube and Facebook. You can post it in both places, wins. This is almost done percolating. Is that the right word to use? I, I don't know, but we'll, we'll, we'll find out. This is going in the trash, AKA Basuda, Coach Ray, for your Spanish lesson today. And then, M Missouri Nation, what is the most important part of coffee? It's not the spoon. It's what you need the spoon for. It's for the honey. And if you haven't tried honey in your coffee after watching 106 episodes in Flight Coffee, we need to talk. That's just how I feel about it. Um, Jimmy Pell said, you're drawing in my house to explain getting into the pattern. <laughs> I remember that. I, I really, I promise when I take this summer off and when we come back for season two of in Flight Coffee, I'm gonna take like an art class or something because my drawing, my drawing is really, it's, um, it's poor at best, isn't it? My, um, I don't even know where the whiteboard is. You don't want me to draw today. Hopefully in today's episode, I don't need to draw. I don't need to draw anything. But you never know when inspiration strikes sometimes. Oh, I do need my clicker though. I do need my clicker. All right. Um, let's, uh, Ron says, yeah, that spoon prank was great, but I can't help but laugh when I think about, I think you hit a banana. <laughs> Ron's talking about an episode where I shared that I ate a banana, and you know, we're, we're, I think we're talking about regulations, we're sharing how it's safe as long as you can drop things from an airplane as long as you take reasonable precautions. And I threw a banana peel, my finished banana peel out, like over a forest, it was okay. Threw it out, it went back and hit the tail. <laughs> and when I taxied in, the line guy came to me and said, I think you hit a banana. Like, he was dead serious. Like, like we were living in Mario Kart or something like that. He goes, sir, I think you hit a banana. <laughs> Like, there's just a flying banana and I just hit it. Of all the things to hit in the air, I hit a banana. Anyways, uh, that is a good one, Ron. That, that's a good one as, uh, as well with that, so I appreciate it. Anyways, I will go back. I will go back and see who got. Please, please participate. Please throw some thumbs up on YouTube, on Facebook. Whichever comment with a story there has the most, um, has the most likes. I mean, you know, get Bradley, both twins can vote. So get, get the boys over there and let them, let them vote as well. How are they, how are they doing, by the way? Um, there's some good ones. The Target story, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Hey, I wanna go, um, I, I wanna go back to episode 105 for a second. Hold on, Magnus, tell me to wait for something. You're looking for something, sweetie? Yeah. Oh, Jess has all the camel references. Uh, before you show them, why are we so obsessed with CAMELS? Because CAMELS stands for Commercial Airplane Multi-Engine Land. Eric Deagle started this, and because of that, we made this animation just for Eric Deagle whenever someone passes their Commercial Airplane Multi-Engine Land. <laughs> it's so unnecessary. It's so, it's so unnecessary. Commercial Airplane Multi-Engine Land. When you pass it, you become a camel. It's just, congratulations. I think instead of little, little ponies for Ralph Lauren, we should all just have little camel. Polos, that's just, that's, that's my idea. Um, anyways, hey, last week I shared with you all, um, last week I shared with you all, this was the Prague chart last Saturday. We talked up in the old, where, who's in the Pacific Northwest right now, right? Who's, put, type in me in the chat, if you are in the Pacific Northwest, AKA the PNW. Um, <laughs> anyway, still laughing at the camel, but your delay, like your comments are like 15 seconds del delayed. <laughs> So I'm like, I switched topics to a very serious topic like prog charts, and now I just see all the camel comments coming in. There's like a, there's a little delay between when I say something here in the studio and I see your comments. So anyway, <laughs> thanks for throwing me off, uh, Eric Deagle and Holly. Thanks a lot. Uh, back to serious matters. This was last week's prog chart. There it is. And I was looking where Colin is and my buddy Eric is uh, and Craig in the, uh, in the Pacific Northwest. And you've got this little, little, jeez. Look at, do you see the occluded front? Let me get my, um, let me find my cursor. Here, oh, there it is. 
you got this occluded front that's hanging out, and as promised, as promised, right? I wanted to show you what this little occluded front has become over the week, and now look at what it's, well, it kind of got a little bit sloppier. Uh, a little bit of it broke off and is going through uh, Canada, and then you've got, it doesn't have that same leverage, that same, like, do you see how big of a, like a curve in that line? This is a really, really strong front. Uh, Dr. Bill, you said it's raining. I, I could have told you that, right? I mean, he's in Virginia right now. Uh, Eric Deagle, it's raining, isn't it, where you're at? See how just big, and when you get this long leverage point, this is like a leverage arm when it gets a curve in it like this, whereas this, the occluded front kind of broke apart a little bit, and it's trying to turn into like two fronts, and it's this high pressure coming from behind that's really kind of messing it up. Now, that's not to say, Utah, you're still getting some ugly weather right now. Idaho, you're still you're getting some winds right now, if I had to guess. I don't know if you're getting as much crummy weather and everything else, but just something else I, I wanted to show you. And again, this is over a week. This is literally in-flight coffee Saturday last week. This is this week. Look at even the, look at this guy, um, this little low with these two little fronts, how it kind of spun off and, and kind of reorganized in a way. Coach Ray, you just got some rain, I'd imagine. All my Texas people, Holly, you probably just got some rain um, as well. So anyways, just something fun. I promised you I'd go back, uh, I'd go back over that again. Uh, Tom Murphy, good to see you. I just heard about the JetBlue news today. Good for you guys. Um, Sue said, Utah has been so weird this week. Yeah, show it the chart one more time. Look at Utah. You've got, you've got this trough. You've got like three lows, three troughs, and then those two highs kind of hanging around. I would say Utah and Colorado has been weird this week. Um, yeah, I, 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 would, I would say so. So um, anyways, um, just your fun little weather knowledge for the day. Bradley, you probably have gorgeous weather right now uh, up there as well. So this is an interactive show. And just to recap for everybody here, we're streaming on YouTube and Facebook simultaneously. This is episode 106 of In Flight Coffee. It is our season finale. I asked for your permission last week and you reluctantly granted it to let Magda and I take some time to be husband and wife and, and, and leaders to our little ones and everything else um, and, and just be that, uh, that family this summer. It's been 106 Saturdays in a row now. We haven't been able to go out on that boat and I'm going out on that boat. I gotta buy the boat first, but we're going out on it. Eric Deagle, I saw your comment earlier, Icon A5 or Sea Ray. I don't fit in either. I, and you and I especially wouldn't fit in either. So I, I don't know. We're going to need um, that Boss 182, I think, is more, more what it's like. But this is an interactive show. Some of you, this may be your first episode. Let me tell you, you got 105 episodes to go catch up on while you wait for us to come back uh, later in the year. I want to ask a question. And, you know, the rules of the game of in-flight coffee and really any M0A live stream or video is that you play full out, right? I ask that you be honest. I ask that you step into the honesty corner. If you don't know something, speak up and we will, uh, uh, we will you know, share uh, and work through those sort of things. Jason, good to see you from Third Street. Again, by the way, good to see you. Um, I want to ask a question here and step in my honesty corner. Who has or ever had a fear of flying. Hey, Vicky Mackey, who has ever had a fear of flying, currently has a fear of flying, previously had a fear of flying, whatever that may be. I'm gonna grab a sip of coffee while you guys type that in. Who has ever had, currently has a fear of, let me, and let's, can we take it a step further? Who knows someone who has a fear of flying? Right, that, that's where I just want to step into our honesty corner here. Um, well, can we pin Greg's comment real quick? I love, love, love Greg's comment. Can we show it real quick? Thank you. Look at, oh, so many comments coming in. Where'd Greg go? There's Greg. Oh, yeah, that one, that one. Every time I go up to solo, I have to conquer it. First off, Greg, golf clap for the, for the humility and for everybody on that, uh, humility for share and such and everything else. But I love what you said there, Greg, about I have to conquer it every time I, I, I solo. And you know what? You all may know uh, John Dela Cruz. Thank you for sharing that too. He says his wife has a fear of flying. A spouse, a son, a, a daughter, a best friend. 
I want to share something. I, I want to start off with kind of a bold statement here. I'm, if you see me looking this way, I just want to follow closely on my notes because I want to make sure I'm, I'm saying this all um, correctly. Steve Bloom, great to see you. He says he's caused some people to have a fear of flying. Yeah, it took me a while to get over that, Steve, you know, but thank you for that. Good to see you, by the way. Good, I, I like the family profile picture, by the way, too. Um, think about this way, and I want to make kind of a bold statement here. Fear, I believe, and this is fear in aviation, this is fear of whatever it may be. I believe fear has really two root causes with it. Two root causes, either wrong teaching being number one, or this is not put it very politically correct, but let's say ignorance on the subject. And ignorance is probably, I should have looked at looking the thesaurus for another word. That's probably a crude word to use, and I apologize for that. But wrong teaching right, can be corrected by right teaching. However, ignorance on the subject is corrected by instruction. Let me give you, let me give you a real world example. So Coach Ray, I love picking on Coach Ray. He's just the easiest one to pick on. Bradley and Eric Deagle next on that list. So Coach Ray, I'll pick on you for a second. When Coach Ray was a little guy, right, 75 years ago when he was a, a, a little guy growing up in the bayou of Louisiana, and one of his friends told him, hey, or, or, or a parent told him, or a brother or sister told him, hey, if you're a bad kid, Coach Ray, they called him Coach Ray even back then, if you're a bad kid, Coach Ray, when you go to sleep, the boogeyman's going to get you, right? Anybody ever believe in the boogeyman, right? You have a fear of the boogeyman? Well, that was wrong teaching, right? That, that, that's in, there's no, there is no boogeyman. That was someone just instilling fear in you based on wrong teaching. Coach Ray, no matter how bad he was, the boogeyman was not going to come get him when he was sleeping. But I think we all, as kids, had a fear of the boogeyman. Now, ignorance comes into fact or into play when Coach Ray is now a 45-year-old man and is still scared to go to bed at night because he thinks the boogeyman might get him. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, Coach Ray. I'll let, I'll let, you, I'll let you share that. But do you, do you see the difference? Wrong teaching. Hey, when you're a little kid, they teach you the boogeyman's going to get you. That, that's, not, that's, that's wrong teaching. That's incorrect teaching. Versus now you're a 40-something-year-old human, and you still think the boogeyman's going to get you. That's just ignorance on the subject. The boogeyman, thank you, Carl. He says the boogeyman's full of snot. The boogeyman's just... He's just a made-up thing. For, for everybody, for everybody, the boogeyman is made up, just to put it out there. It feels like when I, when I had to break it to the kids about the Easter Bunny, and Gavin cried. We, we, play, we play this game at dinner time, uh, true or false. They always don't play this game, and we just name things and tell they're true or false. And I said, the Easter Bunny, and Ella goes, that's false. And Gavin goes, true? And then I said, no, it's false. And he started crying. I felt so bad. I, I broke to him. So I'm breaking it to you all too. Um, the boogeyman um, is also uh, made up. I share that as kind of a silly example to say fear limits us. Now, Fear can also fuel you at the same time, and this is where I'm. I, this is where I'm taking this odd conversation. Okay, this is. I know that was kind of an odd little little setup there, and and you know, Steve Bloom's over there going, "Come on, Jason, get to the point." I promise you, I'm getting there, Steve. This is where I want to take uh, uh, Greg's comment from earlier as well. As a pilot, you are constantly working this balance of confident versus cocky. And I don't know any, any better words to use. I realize cocky probably isn't very politically correct either. But I need you to be a confident pilot, but I don't need you so confident in your skills that you become a cocky pilot. You have to be somewhere in between. And what, what Steve Bloom, I just saw your comment. What, uh, what Greg was sharing, he says, I use mine to take a look at my deficits. I, I love that. In fact, if you have the humility, Greg, to know that you have deficits, a good pilot's always learning. You, if you ever find yourself being a cocky pilot, the scary part is you probably wouldn't know if you were being a cocky pilot. Someone, hopefully someone close enough to you, would be, have to have the guts to say, hey, um, you know, I, I think you're acting a little arrogant. I like that word. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. Sierra, I like that word, a macho, hazardous attitude. Eric Deagle, you're very right. You humble yourself in aviation or aviation will humble you. It's this balance between confidence and cocky. Yet at the same time, I've seen people on the exact opposite end of that spectrum 
where fear has such a hold of them that they're not able to do their job. Ron, I totally agree with your comment that fear can help protect you, but sometimes too much fear, to um, uh, that, that lack of confidence can hurt you as well. If you go up to solo and you don't believe you're ready to solo, or if you don't believe you can do it, you will manifest that in your life. And I believe the things you, that you allow to come out of your mouth, the words you choose to use, those are the kinds of things that you're going to manifest. So I would just ask you all here today to stay, take a step back and look at yourself and on a scale from zero to 10, you don't need to put a number in there, but where do you fit? Because I'd like you to be a five. I'd like you to be confident, but not, not cocky, just right there in the middle. Um, and you know, you're gonna wane. When you start that instrument rating, you're gonna go down to a four, you know, closer, closer to, to, to losing that confidence, that lack of confidence. You're gonna be lacking it, and then you'll build that back up. But you have to, you have to have that balance. And I need you, I need you to believe in your skills. You have to let that fear be a counselor, like you were saying earlier, Greg, and not a jailer. Let fear show you where you're deficient. Um, where are my instrument pilots at? Instrument pilots, do you remember your first time in the clouds? I, I guarantee without a shadow of a doubt, you all remember your first time in the clouds. Lane, congratulations and great to see you, by the way. Lane, a lo how long has the journey been, Lane, if you wouldn't mind sharing with everybody? Um, congratulations on everything. But yeah, who remembers? Dan, Kira, I see you there. Who remembers their first time in the clouds? And whose confidence meter went towards the lacking side quickly? You're like, oh, this instrument stuff is legit. I always tell people, and I am not the biggest fan. I've shared this for 106 episodes now. It's no, no secret. I'm not the biggest fan of like these 10-day instrument ratings. Like, go get your instrument in 10 days. And I understand some people, you just have to do it, and I can make an argument for it and, and a case for it. That's fine. I'm not a fan of it because typically you go out to a place like Arizona where you never see a cloud, you prep for just the check ride, you get your instrument ticket, then you have this confidence, I'm an instrument pilot, then you go back to Florida or you go back to the East Coast or wherever it is and it's August and you're getting these afternoon thunderstorms and you think you can go blazing through them or you think you can go blazing down to minimums when there's that radiation fog in the morning and you forgot the difference between the foggles and the real deal, right? Good to see you, Micah, by the way. It is, um, it's, it's a, a different feeling, right? That's where I need you to map this out. By the way, Lane, who, who just hit the finish line, started Private Pilot in 1998, got private uh, October 2021, and just got instant rating on Wednesday. It's been, uh, Lane's one of our phenomenal online ground school members, and it's just, uh, we've been, following that amazing, amazing uh, journey. You probably saw his picture in the nation uh, for instrument uh, just a few, uh, a few days ago. So anyways, now aviation isn't inherently without risks. This is why you need to be confident in your skills but not so cocky because if you are cocky, you will end up hurting yourself. You will end up hurting yourself in that. Now I wanna, I wanna debunk a myth and it's a painful myth to debunk but but we need to go over it here. Um, you hear people say the phrase, and they do this to lessen the fear of their passengers sometimes, that um, aviation is, uh, flying an airplane is safer than driving a car. And I did a lot of research on this, and even more research, AOPA did a ton of research on this as well, and they tried to split the facts a million different ways, and they just found out that to not be entirely true. I have the fact here. If you're looking at it traveling per mile, cars, vehicles, sorry, Magda. Oh, I'm reading my notes, sorry. Cars have seven times more accidents per mile traveled. However, general aviation has seven times higher fatalities per mile. So yes, there are more car accidents per mile traveled However, they don't have the fatalities that say something does like general aviation. So, I know you hear the, the, the it's a myth, right? 
that general aviation is safer than driving a car. It depends how you define safer, accident versus fatality um, with that. People can spin the data however they want. Listen, we have chosen an amazing hobby, an amazing career. We all operate time machines. You know there's only around 600,000 pilots uh, in the United States certificated? I mean, talk about the 1% of 1%. You all operate time machines, whether for a living or for a hobby. But with that time machine operation, I'm referring to aviation being a time machine because it saves a ton of time, right? Um, usually, <laughs> usually it does. Um, it comes with a great responsibility with this that we have to do. And season, it's like you can see my notes ahead of me. You said human error is the major cause of accidents. You know, you're, you're picking up exactly where I'm putting down with all this. If we could take the chat down for a second, I wanna show the slide quickly here. This is the, the latest null report. Unfortunately, the data only goes until 2015. Uh, but I want you to look at the facts uh, on the left-hand side of your screen. You can see since 2006, we've had a slow trend down in the overall accident rate. And in 13, 14, 15, um, we have dropped under 1,000. We've plateaued there, but we've dropped under 1,000 aviation accidents and under 200 fatal aviation accidents as well. I think those are some pretty good numbers. In fact, I looked this morning, I figured, you know what, maybe I'll, I'll, I was gonna add to this presentation and share the NTSB's most wanted list. The NTSB produces a most wanted list for everything from aviation to maritime to rail to uh, highway. It's National Transportation Safety Board. It's more than just aviation. They produced a most wanted list. So I looked at the most wanted list for, um, for aviation and I looked at that and there's only two things and they were actually both related to revenue operations like airlines. One was having a safety management system and one was having some sort of flight data recorder like a black box. There weren't even anything that applied to general aviation. I thought, wow, um, interesting. By the way, this report, Holly, uh, that, that's from the, uh, the Joseph T. Nall, N-A-L-L -L report that AOPA puts out I want to say every year, it might be every other year. The facts continue though here to Season's point earlier, what's causing all those accidents? Well, look at this. They really put it into three categories. Major causes of non-commercial, that's us, fixed wing general aviation accidents here. Pilot related accidents. 73% of all accidents were pilot related. 15% were mechanical and 10% fall into an other or an unknown category. And if I could be so bold, let's leave that slide up for a second. If I could be so bold, if you gave me all 152 mechanical accidents, I bet I could find a pilot issue in there, missing something on pre-flight, because mechanical could be, I did it, actually Steve Bloom, you were there. I did an aviation uh, seminar at sea, and one of the accidents I did was an aircraft coming out of the paint shop where the paint shop rigged the flight controls backwards. And the pilots lit were, I can't even fathom this, uh, and Steve is my witness, he was there, and I can't remember who else was there. Um, they were able to land the airplane safely, doing everything opposite, literally back, you know, back was down, forward was up, left was right, right was left, they, everything was complete trim, everything was perfectly rigged, backwards. And they were able, what they did, they were full of fuel, they went out to the practice area and they practiced and learned the controls and temporarily retrained their brain and came back in. They also did it because they wanted to burn off fuel in case it ended in a disaster. And they came back in and safely landed. It wasn't a pretty landing, but they safely landed the airplane. Now, I would imagine that would end up as a mechanical fault in the NTSB's eyes. But I would be so bold as to say, you know what? I read my checklist every single time. Magda is my witness. I do that run up faithfully every single time. Thumb up, aileron up. Or for our Cirrus pilots there, you don't really get the thumb action, right? But anyways, you check. You know, aileron up, aileron, you check all that. Left side up, right side down. I I've never done a run up that didn't include flight controls free and correct. In fact, I check it on, um, I check it on pre-flight and I check it at run-up. I'm sure that falls under mechanical error, but I'd call that probably some, some 
pilot error in there as well. Looking back at that chart again real quick, I guarantee I would take, again, like I said, those 152 mechanical accidents, find some issues where the pilot could have helped, and I just I would love to see the other or unknown category um, as to what they put uh, in there. Sometimes things just, just happen. Um, but anyways, I want to share that. Because I, I, and I shared all this, all about this fear, all about this confident versus cocky and everything else. And I share this accident data, which oddly enough is encouraging. And I also encourage you all to read the Joseph T. Nall report from AOPA. It's, it's 20 something pages. It's full of data. If you geek out on data, it will make you a safer, smarter pilot and it will help you avoid, like John Dela Cruz just put in the chat from Facebook, it will help you avoid complacency. And that's what we're really after. You can't have complacency. I share in Aviation Mastery, the book, what I call the fighter pilot's prayer. And it's, it's literally uh, when, when the lieutenant walked out, when, when she heard, it was, it was, I won't share the whole story, but um, her mission was to take down the last hijacked plane on September 11th. And her, her, her words to herself running out the door to her airplane was literally, don't let me mess this up, except she didn't say mess up. We have to keep this a PG show. She said, don't let me mess this up. I, I think when even a fighter pilot has the humility to know that I, even I could mess up and you're the nation's best pilots, I think even when the captain with 30,000 hours has the humility to know that I know I've been to this airport a million times, I still take out my taxiway diagram, I still uh, you know, double check that frequency, I still confirm these things. When you operate and avoid complacency, you're gonna have a very, very uh, long career in aviation. So Danielle, oh, that was from, the chapter's called The Fighter Pilot's Prayer in Aviation Mastery, the book. Now I share all that, hey Michael Phillips, to tee this up to say, you all know this, it's not an emergency if you're ready for it. There were 900 some odd accidents and there are gonna to continue to be 900, um, 900 accidents. You know, one of my dreams is to take that accident rate to zero. And the only way you're gonna take that accident rate to zero is if you take the human factor out of it. And I don't wanna take the human factor out of it. I love, I love all this artificial intelligence and self, you know, driving cars and, you know, self flying airplanes and everything else. I think I have a control issue with that hopping in something that flies itself. That's just me. I don't think it'll be my problem to deal with. I think maybe if Ellen and Gavin take over M0A, it'll be their problem <laughs> to deal with. Um, how do you teach ground school to you know, robots? I, I don't know, they'll figure it out though. Um, I don't think the accident rate will ever go to zero though, um, as long as humans are still, um, still flying, right? So I share that to say, it's not an emergency if you're ready for it. Can I ask you a question? Let's step back in my honesty corner. And you can put a number in the chat if, you, if you're comfortable with it. When's the last time you practiced emergency procedures? You can, is it two weeks, two months, two years? When's the last time you practice emergency procedures? Take it a step further, just to challenge you a little bit more. When's the last time, when's the last time you did stalls and steep turns and slow flight and just, Got back to the basics. When's the last time you were above the airport at 3,000 feet, pulled the throttle back to idle and steep spiraled down for landing? When's the last time you did that? I, I'm, just, I'm just telling you. And Eric Deagle, I haven't seen your video, your post just yet. I did see your Slack message. I apologize. It's been a crazy week. Uh, I need to hear all about this though, Eric Deagle. He said, Sunday for real with a for real engine failure. I, I didn't, I, I, I'm going to go do my homework on that, Eric Deagle. I'd like to talk to you. Uh, about that. When's the last time you practice these sort of things? Because as Eric Deagle will tell you, as someone who just battled an engine failure uh, a week ago, probably still shaken from the newness of it all, and someone myself who's experienced it many, many years ago, and I hope to never do such again, what happens, Eric Deagle? The training kicks in. And hopefully not train from two years ago, hopefully train from two weeks ago. At a minimum, Two, two months ago. Jared, I love your comment. He goes, you know, I'm, I'm working on it now, right? Absolutely. And you should always be working on it. I never enjoyed doing a flight review for somebody. And the last time I, I always ask, when's the last time you did an emergency approach to landing? Ah, two years ago, Jason, when you last did my flight review, I think, man, like, 
It's not an emergency if you're ready for it. Are you training for these things? Um, you know, uh, Coach Ray, Steve Bloom, and my other Cirrus pilots, you'll, um, you'll appreciate this. Magda and I were, um, were flying and we were talking and she, she was sharing this. She goes, tell me, give me a list, Jason, of all the times, all the reasons, or all the scenarios when you would use the, the chute uh, in the Cirrus. All, give, me, give me a list of all the reasons. And I was saying, honestly, it's easier to tell you all the times I wouldn't use it. And in fact, when the POH advises against it, obviously low altitude, below 600 feet is one of them. But another one I brought up that people don't think about too often is, what about an in-flight fire? Look at the Cirrus POH for an in-flight fire. It doesn't include pulling the chute because the last thing I want to do is prolong being up there. Pull the chute and have a nice, beautiful descent on fire down. I don't think you'd make it to the ground. I think you'd burn up and probably burn up the parachute uh, beforehand. In fact, in flight fire, what do we do? We execute our emergency descent, right? We want to actually get down as quickly as possible, try to extinguish that fire. But when's the last time you practice that? We practice the engine failure so much, but when's the last time you had that, oh, what if, what if my... Um, this, this crossed my mind because, you know, we, we upgraded our 1972 airplane to all LED, which included all new wiring, mostly because we wanted to, not because we had to. And it just got me thinking, wow, this is all new wiring stuff. What if we did something wrong and I have like a wingtip fire? Well, then it's a slip because I want to keep that fire back over this direction. I don't want to go like this and encourage the fire to come. I want to keep the fire away from it. So I'm going to slip down as I come in to keep that fire out and away. You could do the same with the fires on one side of the engine, whatever that may be right? You've got to think of those sort of things. When's the last time you practiced all of that? And the Cirrus brings up an interesting example. And actually, I'm very proud uh, you, uh, of the Rex Air team. You all, you all know Magda and I had the opportunity to invest um, in, in Rex Air, a little flight school down in Naples. Uh, they just purchased, I don't even know if this is news or I should be sharing this yet, but I, sometimes I share things I'm not allowed to share all the time. Um, they just bought, uh, there's a Cirrus approved trainer that has the simulated chute pull that simulates the actual weight. And it takes a little bit of muscle to pull the chute and everything else and simulates all that um, in, in Flight Simulator, whatever software it's actually using. I thought, what? You know, we talk about it so much, but nobody understands what it's like. I mean, they, they say it's going to take two hands, right? It's what, what is it, Coach Ray? 30 or 40 pounds of pressure, they say, to, to pull that thing down. I mean, you have to think of these sort of things it's not an emergency if you're ready for it. So your homework is what are some emergencies you need to go out and practice. An emergency descent is kind of fun. It wouldn't be fun if you're actually on fire. 45 pounds, thank you, Coach Ray. 40, are some of y'all strong enough to pull, Magda, could you pull 45 pounds that, if you had to pull the chute? I had a, I had a, I, with adrenaline. We, we, she said with adrenaline I could. Yeah, probably with adrenaline you could pull 45 pounds uh, of, of pressure. Uh, to pull that down. I had, uh, anybody ever fly the old Moonies with the J-Bar, the landing gear? I had a, I had a lady, um, very, 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 very petite like, like Magda, but she was an older lady uh, that I was working on her commercial with, and we tried to do it in the Mooney, but it's, it's manual retraction of gear, and she literally wasn't strong. It took both of us to retract the gear, because you, you physically pull the landing gear up um, with that. It's, it's fascinating. But again, you have to think about these sort of things that you have to practice. Janice, you know, M20E, I love the J-Bar. I think it's a fail-proof system. If you're, but, but Janice, you'll know it takes a little bit of muscle, doesn't it? Or getting to the right speed um, as well. So first point I wanted to share is it's not an emergency if you're ready for it. Second trip, you ready? Second trip. Second tip. I'm thinking about our summer vacation we're going to go on. We're going on a cruise with Steve Bloom I saw earlier. Thanks, Steve. Can't wait. Um, once you get behind the airplane, it is inherently difficult to catch up. Show of hands, type in me in the chat, who has ever fallen behind an airplane? And I, how many people are watching this, Magda? How many people are live with us right now? Let's, uh, let's see. I got a couple hundred people between YouTube and Facebook. I better get a couple hundred me's in the chat because unless you're not flying yet, everybody has fallen behind the airplane uh, at one point uh, or another. David, hi back to your daughter. Everybody has fallen behind the airplane at one point or another. And maybe it's in your instrument training where you're trying to figure out this instrument stuff and all of a sudden you get this radio call to the Mike Zulia, five miles from the final approach fix, turn left hand 330, maintain 2000 till established, cleared ILS runway 36 at Ocala. 
And what do you do? You look at your CFI and go, what did they just say? Anybody ever done that? Look at your CFI like, back, back me up. You, you get that radio call. I, I, don't, I don't know, you get it. I think we've all done that. I've been that CFI. I've done that to my CFI um, before. And you fall behind the airplane. Uh, you're, this is how people fail check rides. People fail check rides because they fall behind the airplane. Let me, let me explain. This is perfect because we're in this mock check ride May series. By the way, I hope everybody loved the video, the ultimate check ride strategy. Um, people fail check rides because they fall behind the airplane. You kind of goofed up your steep turns back there. Not, you didn't goof them up bad enough to fail, but you goofed them up and, and, and you know it. The DP continues on and says, show me some slow flight. And you're, you're, still thinking, you're still thinking back there to those crummy steep turns. But let me tell you something. Those crummy steep turns are not thinking about you. You had a really bad landing. And you come back around, you're flying your whole pattern sloppy again. And you know what? It's because you're still thinking about that crummy bad landing. But that bad landing is not thinking about you. And Colin, I see your comment. I like it. You can get ahead of the airplane. He goes, wait. You can get ahead of the airplane. You can get a, I, I've known Colin for a long time on many, many in-flight coffee episodes. Um, yes, and that, and that is what we're always striving for. Now, there are going to come times where you feel a little behind the airplane, but you have the ability through your knowledge and through doing the right thing in the right order, and we'll talk about that in a second, to get to catch up. But once you fall behind the airplane, it's inherently difficult to catch up. I could show you NTSB report after NTSB report where it all started with slowly, incrementally falling behind the airplane. A lot of bad choices, a lot of bad things, that Swiss cheese kind of model that just kept going, not breaking the chain of events. And you see preparation is the one thing the average pilot, and no one here is an average pilot, no one would be here on a beautiful Saturday afternoon if you were an average pilot. Preparation is the one thing the average pilot does very, very little of. And the expert pilot, and, and you're probably too humble to call yourself an expert pilot, so how about the pilot pursuing mastery does consistently every flight? It's, it's doing the research on your phone. I mean, just the other day, Magda and I were, actually, I'm like, I'll give you a very cool real world example. Magda and I were gonna be flying, we were supposed to fly to the Orlando Apopka Airport. And I'd have to look back at my logbook. If I had been to the Orlando Apopka Airport, it had been a long, 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 long time. I, I hadn't been there. So I literally was doing my normal due diligence. I was on Google Maps looking at it. I go, oh, it's right by the road. That's interesting. I was looking at, gosh, those hangars are awfully close to that runway, I thought, as I was looking at it. I called the little FBO there to make sure they had fuel. Is it full service? Is it self-serve? Um, I tried to read some comments on ForeFlight. I was doing all my research and just, you would think, Jason, you're in, you're in Central Florida. Maybe you've never been to the Orlando Apopka Airport. Flown over it a million times, just never actually been to it. Well checking out the weather and everything else and really kind of um, um, watching it and everything else and realized that this afternoon storm, it may be May, but we're starting to get our afternoon summer storms already, popped up right over the Orlando Apopka Airport. We had to deviate, uh, we had to divert to the Leesburg Airport. Ground school members know this, that's where I did the webinar from, right? Um, we diverted to the Leesburg Airport and because preparation is the one thing the Pilot pursuing mastery does each and every flight. I had already briefed. Hey, you know what? Leesburg is a good diversion airport if the weather's bad. I, I know, I know the Sun Air Aviation there, but I called anyways. You know, what I learned when I called. I learned they had, they're tearing up their entire ramp, and you got to park somewhere else now. There's a notum for it too, but I saw that, confirmed that. Preparation. It's the it's the person who gets the weather briefing on four flight and still calls on their drive to the airport just to talk to another person, just to maybe hear those words, VFR flight not recommended. That's the difference. That's how you stay ahead of the airplane. That's the good decision making, like you said, Jimmy. That's how we go above and beyond. Marty Miller, like your acronym, he said, we're all PPMs, pilots, pursuing, mastery. Uh, papa, Papa Mike's. I, I, I like it. So with that, to be a PPM, you must continue to pursue knowledge. Let me ask you a question. Lane, you just passed your instrument rating. What are you going to do next? John De La Cruz, you just got a lot of weight off your shoulders, my friend. Congratulations. But what's next, right? 
how are you, I'm not gonna see you for a season, right? Ground school members, I'll still see you. Holly, Hunter, you know, Marty, I'll, I'll still see you all on the Tuesday webinars. I'm not going anywhere from those, but in flight coffee, we're gonna take this season off. So I'm not gonna see you all for a few months while I try to convince Magda to let me buy a boat and, and go out and drink a cup of coffee and read a book, because that's what you, I would do on a boat at least, right? What are you gonna be doing between now and episode 107 of In-Flight Coffee? Because whether you like it or not, I'm gonna be your accountability partner. And I hope you'll be my accountability partner as well and hold me uh, to what I'm working on as a, as a leader, as a business owner, as a father, as a husband, and as a pilot, and as a flight instructor. And those can be two different things sometimes. In fact, ground school members, we had, the, we had probably one of my favorite webinars last Tuesday when I was stranded at the Leesburg Airport I had this great mock check ride I was gonna do. Instead, I pulled up four flights and said, hey, ground school members, um, help me make a smart go or no-go decision. What would you do, right? And we went back and forth and some said they would go and some said they wouldn't go. We did a whole weather briefing. We looked at all the weather together here. And eventually we kind of came to the conclusion like, let's go and get to the Lakeland Airport. And if we, we'll recheck, if we get to Lakeland and we like it, we'll continue this way to Sarasota. And, we'll continue, and actually I think, Jennifer, you were the one who said, hey Jason, I think if you can get to the coast, it looks good. And we kind of crouched, it was just so much fun. And you can, I think it was the last flight on to the Mike Zoo, go look on FlightAware. You can see my route around all this weather. We literally, it was actually an awesome flight. We went to basically Sarasota, and flew the whole coast all the way down to Naples. It was, it was awesome. It was very, very cool. But you see, that was done through a community. And you all have something powerful. You have the M0A Nation Facebook group. And if you're not on there, Magda, can you show them the lower third for it? You need to go search M0A Nation. Um, there it is, on Facebook. And I'm surprised you all don't use this more. I think you should. Hey, I've got a VFR cross country from this airport to this airport in three days. I'm 50-50 on it. What do you guys think? I would love to see a post like that. I think it shows humility on the poster's part. Um, and it shows the ability um, to think outside the box. Yeah, still call the briefer. There's still just a bunch of dedicated pilots on Facebook and everything else. But you've got an amazing community. Um, this idea of, of let's just, let's, let's fly and let's just see what happens. That shouldn't be a phrase that you use in the airplane. I don't know, let, let's get up there, let's get a little closer to that storm and let's just see what happens. Let's get, let's get over there, let's, let's, let's see what happens. Now, if you wait to see what happens, you're gonna end up hurting yourself in an airplane. Now you can see what it looks like because sometimes what's shown on the radar is very different and everything else, but to see what happens, let's kind of go through this cloud and see what happens. That, that sounds like the start of an NTSB report. It, it's, it's just that simple with all of that. It's just that simple. So um, you must continue to pursue knowledge. But I, I need to make one very clear point here. Knowledge will not save you from an accident. Knowledge is not power, knowledge is potential power. We all know somebody who could tell you all about how to invest your money, yet their finances are in disarray. We all know somebody who will tell you how to handle your spouse or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, yet they don't even have a relationship or their, their relationship's all messed up too, right? Knowledge isn't power, knowledge is potential power. Show me, show me your knowledge, right? Don't, don't tell me about your knowledge. Live your knowledge out. That, don't, don't tell me how smart you are. Show me how smart you are. And it's not only, um, it's not only the knowledge, it's the right knowledge at the right time. It's syntax. Where, Craig, where, where are my fellow Craigs, my fellow IT people? You all know what syntax means. Craig, if you have a syntax error when you're doing something, you've got maybe all the right ingredients, just in the wrong order. If I am baking a cake and I've got steps one through 10 and you give me the most amazing ingredients, I saw there was someone watching earlier from Italy, if you go get me some, the best ingredients from, from the best chocolate from Italy or the best chocolate from Germany, whatever it is, you get me the best ingredients, but I say, you know what, I'm gonna skip step one, which is turn on the oven, preheat the oven to 375. I'm gonna skip that, I'm just gonna go step two. I can make all the ingredients and everything else and throw it in the oven, 
but I never turned the oven on. I've got a syntax error, right? Micah says, I hate syntax errors. They get you sometimes, don't they? You could have the right things. It's just in the wrong order. So this is why I say you must choose your sources wisely. We are in an age right now, team. Y'all are our team, by the way. Our family. We're in an age where we're drowning in information but starving for wisdom. I would just be cautious of where you get your choose to get your wisdom from. I hope you see M0A as one of those places you choose to get your wisdom from. But there's a lot of places out there where there, where there isn't always the best, the best knowledge. You know, I've heard, I've, heard, um, I've heard all the phrases. Well, let's just see what happens. I heard one from a CFI. I was getting in the plane with a CFI, and I said, hey, you want to knock out a pre-flight real quick? And he goes, Jason, the airplane got me here. It'll get me where we're going. I thought, you're a CFI. Um, I've, I've heard it before. It's only green on the radar, so I'm going. Like there's all these lines that you just hear and you think those are lies. That's not true. That doesn't, whoever told you that was not speaking from a place of wisdom. Or the worst part is you skip the pre-flight once and you got away with it. It was green on the radar once and you got away with it. I've flown in worse conditions before because you got away with it. Um, in, um, in the book, Think and Grow Rich, which was written in 1937, it, it shares how when a thief first comes into contact with crime, they go, oh, that's I can't believe you would steal. That's terrible. And then when they, when they stay around crime, they go, oh, well, you know, it's, it's, only, it's only shoes he's stealing. It's not like we're robbing a bank or anything. You're just stealing shoes or whatever. And, and then next thing you know, it, it just... It becomes normal. Stealing just becomes normal. And it starts off with, oh, I don't like that. And then it just becomes normal. Skipping your pre-flight just feels normal eventually. Or I've flown worse weather before or, or whatever that is. You have to watch for these red flags. You all can be the best pilots you, be, you can be, but you step in the airplane with other pilots, you have to be so cautious. Danny Carson, I love your comment. I'm a fair weather flyer, he said. I, I, I love that attitude. I love the attitude of you never have to be anywhere. You never have to, um, you never have to, uh, yeah, you never have to be anywhere. Bill Campbell, I love it. Abhor, accept, embrace. That's how Napoleon Hill says it. You are exactly, exactly right. Oh, who, how could you ever skip your pre-flight? Gosh, I'm running so far behind today. I'm just going to, I don't have time to sump the fuel, but I'll, I'll check everything else. And the next thing you know, you don't even sump the fuel anymore because you just assume the line guy did it right. It, it, this is how people hurt themselves. Kira, you couldn't have picked a better quote, by the way, from one of my favorite people, Tony Robbins, says, it's when moments of decision, your destiny is shaped. And our destiny is in a hunk of, a hunk of aluminum or carbon fiber series pilots at 90 knots or 140 knots, 60 knots series pilots, right? I'm teasing the series pilots. So, we must continue to pursue knowledge. And, and pursuing knowledge of the right things, by the way. Pursuing knowledge of, you know, I know I talk a lot about accidents. And the truth is, I don't like talking about accidents. I know some of y'all are saying, that's, that's weird, Jason. What do you mean you don't like talking about that? You talk about them all the time. I talk about them of the 900 accidents a year because what we can begin to do is see a pattern. And if you look at enough accidents, you will begin to see a pattern. And the pattern is almost always the same. And here's a truth you find in the accidents. When, when you begin to recognize the pattern as something you've seen before, you can break that negative pattern. This is, this is true of anything. This is true of New Year's resolutions. I'm going to the gym, right? And you, you set your shoes out by your bed, you pre-fill your water up in the morning, you set the alarm, you get everything else, you have created a pattern of success to get out of bed and go to the gym. And then February comes around, you go, ah, oh, I'm so tired, I don't have time to get everything ready, I'll, but I'll have no problem waking up. And the moment you break the pattern of not putting the shoes out, not getting the water ready in the morning, not setting the alarm, oh, I'll just wake up on my own. You're not going to the gym that morning, are you? The same is true of accidents. You can see a pattern, especially like the weather and decision-making accidents. You can see a pattern that just, these pilots, look at JFK Jr. 
so many opportunities, so many opportunities, 37 airports. It's been a while since I presented on that. But I want to say it was 30 something airports that he passed that had fuel, that had lights, that had a beacon, 37 diversion opportunities. And every time he passed one, he created a pattern. He added a link to the chain that just got longer and longer. Just like that cold front I showed you at the beginning, it gets, the, the longer it gets, the stronger it gets. The chain of events of an accident is exactly the same way. It's this repeatable pattern. And back to the syntax example, Micah, back when you see that order, back when you see that pattern, you have the opportunity to break it or scramble it or stop it all together, what, whatever that may be. I want to show that quote one more time, Magda. When we recognize the pattern as something we've seen before, we break that negative pattern. Hey, remember that time I flew with my CFI and it was gusting to 17 and I got, I got nauseous. It was, it was so bumpy. Well, today is gusting to 15. Do you think gusting to 17 and gusting to 15 have anything in common? Yeah, yeah, they do. It's going to be a bumpy day. Or wow, remember, remember last time, um, you know, we, we tried to fly in the summer at 3 p.m. and we had to be there and we, we barely made it through all those summer storms. We, were, we got on the ground, we were kissing the ground. Yeah, I, I know my meeting's at 3, but I'm going to get there early. I'm going to fly up at 8 a.m. and I'll find a Starbucks to work at the rest of the day if I really have to be at that meeting at 3 p.m. You break the chain. You break the chain. And, and listen, of everybody here, I'm talking to a bunch of chain breakers is what I'm talking to. That's what, that's what we need to add to that, Marty Miller. Would you say pilots pursuing mastery? Hashtag chain breakers. We're chain breakers in everything else that we do. So as we, um, as we come to, uh, to the top of the hour, um, I wanna kinda start to wrap this up a little bit. I'll, I'll, take some, I'll take some comments and everything else here too. I just wanna share one thing with you because you are a successful pilot and successful pilots never stop. Successful pilots never stop acquiring specialized knowledge. A good pilot is always learning, but how is the question, how? Well, how starts with you? How starts with, okay, we've done 106 episodes of in-flight coffee. Have you missed any? Go watch them. Every Tuesday, I do about an hour and a half long webinar with our online ground school members. You got years of recordings to go watch or go take a trial of it. Magda's got it on the screen, m0atrial.com. If you wanna, you know what? It's time to get that instrument rating. Let me start with the knowledge. It's time to, let me just peek at the commercial. Just let me just look at the knowledge and see if that's something I'm interested in. At least you're adding that knowledge to the equation. What's your next step? What's your how with all of that? And then to that point, you've gotta know your weaknesses. For me, Systems was my weakness. I, I've never been mechanically inclined. I've never been one to get my hands dirty or anything like that. It's just never my thing. Never been mechanically inclined. Not like Bill Campbell and A&P and everything else and Jamie Beckett, who's an A&P. Um, you know, that's on my how list. Become an A&P one day. Now with, with Rex Air, that's something I could realistically do, having a maintenance shop to go train at and, and do that at. Systems was a weakness of mine but then I chose to get my hands dirty. I became an aircraft owner and started doing owner assisted annuals. And my, I started doing my own oil changes, all those things. Jared, you're right. I studied metallurgy. What's the word again? Yeah, that, he put the word there for me. I can't pronounce it. Pronunciation's not, not my jam either. Um, another weakness of mine, you're, some of you are gonna find this hard to believe. I had a professor in college, and I thought when you were in college, Magda, correct me if I'm wrong, I thought when you're in college, professors, stopped calling your parents. Remember when you're in high school and they'd be like, oh, the teacher called mom again. Like, I thought in college, like, I'm 18 now. You're not allowed to call my parents anymore. Like, because my parents got a phone call from Westport High School every single week, it seemed like, of what thing I, usually, what not what thing I did, usually what thing I didn't do, uh, like homework or whatever it was. I was a bad student. But I had, I had a professor, Captain Harrison was his name, and he, he called my mom. Maybe my mom called to check on me. Maybe that's what it really was, I don't know. And he said, Mrs. Schaffer, Jason is going to be a great pilot if I could just get him to study and understand weather. I don't know if I ever told you that story, Magda. I didn't like weather. I was working on my commercial and I was still fumbling my way through METARs and TAFs and cold front, warm front. I don't know, one's cold, one's, I, I just, I didn't 
care to know. And I remember that. Again, I, again, I don't know who called who, but I, all I know is Captain Harrison talked to my mom and said, Jason's going to be a good pilot, but, there's always a but to that, if I could just get him to study and appreciate and understand weather. And it's funny, weather is such a passion of mine now. Sometimes you have to take your weaknesses and flip them on their head and, and let it be your strength. Remember, 20 years ago, I had a CFI tell me when I goofed up that landing and landed in the grass and basically had a controlled crash, said to me, Jason, maybe you're not meant to be a pilot. You can choose to let that define you or you can choose to let that fuel you. You can choose to let that be your weakness forever or you can choose to let that, let that, be, your, let that be your greatest strength. I'll share with you something personally, and Magda, I hope you don't get mad at me for, for sharing this, but I have long, I, I'm, I'm too, too young for this, I have long suffered from, from back issues. Just uh, not very flexible. If you ever met me, I'm super, super tall, and I always give the excuse, I, I'm tall, got a lot of leverage on my spine, everything else. And you know, I was talking to Magda, and I'm talking, it was getting to the point where like once a month I was hurting my back, and every, I was just getting so tired of it. And I finally told Magda, I said, I, I am fed up. Back pain and injury is no longer in my vocabulary. And I've been, I've been taking the steps and, and doing the right exercises and Coach Ray, you would be proud um, and, and everything else to make sure that I'm no longer going to manifest that in my life. You, you have a choice. This is what I want to leave you with for the, for the months when we're going to be apart if, the, if you're not a ground school member. You have the opportunity during these months between when I see you again to make your weakness your greatest strength in everything that you do. I'm gonna do it with my back and some skills in my flying, some, some business skills and everything else, and family skills, everything else. But that's where I want you all to begin to focus on. You see, these little choices, these little choices become your habits. But habits go on to have this compounding effect, this exponential effect to literally change, change your entire life in, in everything that you do. So I'll leave you with that. What is your weakness? Own it. This is my weakness, but it is no longer my weakness. Systems is my weakness. It's no longer my weakness. Whether it was my weakness, it's no longer my weakness. Landings are my weakness. This is no longer my, my weakness. Turn your shoulds into musts. This is exactly right, Kira. Exa Kira, have you ever done UPW? Phenomenal, by the way. Um, Y'all are absolutely right. So with that, I want to open it up now for questions. Any questions, any comments, before I say goodbye, just for a little while, any questions, any comments, I want to hear from you all. And if you want to put in your weakness in the chat so I can be your accountability partner, like Lane put in crosswind landings. Lane, I will hold you to that, my friend. I will hold you to that, my friend. Um, yeah. Um, if you want to put that in there or anything else, um, Travis, love the profile picture, by the way. Thank you for that, my friend, your service. Um, is there a four flight work through video? Well, Travis, you need to talk to the lady right above you, Kira, because that's exactly where Kira works. Kira, where would you, um, what, what kind of training does four flight have to master four flight? Kira, if you wouldn't mind, uh, sharing that. Um, John Dela Cruz, advice for instrument pilot going into commercial training, Mr. Dela Cruz. What airplane, by the way, are you able to do it in the 172? Or what airplane are you gonna do it at? Would be my question for you with that. Um, my next point with all this, my friend, just like instrument, start building up that knowledge early. But John De La Cruz, I need you to get your VFR skills back again. You spent so much time looking in the airplane, I need you to go beat up the traffic pattern again and get your VFR skills uh, back going again. So you're doing it in the clubs 182? Is it, it's a TAA and it's good to go for commercial? If that's the case, John Dela Cruz, work on flying with the wife and try to go somewhere. Work on her fear of flying and work on your VFR skills and getting those refreshed again um, as well. Douglas, we will be at Oshkosh, my friend. Look forward to seeing you all there. We will be at Oshkosh. As it stands right now, we'll be flying 2-3 Mike Zulu up there as well. So super excited uh, about all of that. So yes, um, that, will be, um, that will be there. Um, Wow, a username Nuji on uh, YouTube. Any tips for motivating myself to study more for the written test? My friend, I'm never here to sell, so please don't, don't, don't mishear this. 
I would encourage you, if you love this teaching style, go take a trial of the ground school. And don't just take a trial of the ground school. It's on your screen, m0atrial.com. Look at the private pilot written test prep boot camp. Who, where, where are my boot camp alumni? Who did the boot camp? Put it in the chat. Type in me in the chat. It is 12 videos and 12 quizzes geared towards one thing, pass that knowledge test successfully. Then we also just launched our free study section where you can do the aviation mastery method where it's this flashcard style of studying as well, my friend. Try it for two weeks, no credit card needed, and please, please, please make sure you love it before you spend any money with us. Please, I, I, I mean that. We don't want to just, as much as we'd love to have your business, we don't want to have your business just to have your business. We are looking for customers for life. You know, they're going to always live by this good pilots, always learning mantra. We make sure it's a good fit for everybody um, with that. Boots said, my grandson, 17, preparing for his check ride. What's the best piece of advice I can give him? Boots, if you have not watched last week's video, the ultimate check ride strategy, forward that on to your grandson. So uh, he has that and can watch that. And here is my best advice. First off, 17 years old is a young man. We want to make sure we are molding the next generation. This is going to be some weird check ride advice. You ready for this? Not only do they need to show up prepared, but they need to show up professional for this as well. Professional for this. I tell my students, my learners, dress like you're going to golf at a nice golf course. Get plenty of sleep the night before. Bring all your books with you. Dress for success in what you're doing. Be confident in your, in your answers and answer the question and zip it. Don't be like Jason and just keep talking. Answer the question and zip it. If they say, tell me, if they say, what is hypoxia? Just say, hey, hypoxia. Oh, that's the lack of oxygen to the vital organs. And you zip it. You don't say, oh, hypoxia, that's the lack of oxygen to the vital organs. There's actually four types of hypoxia. Because what's the next question going to be? Oh, that's interesting, Jason. Tell me the next, tell me the four types of hypoxia. Do you, do you follow me with that? That's called a check ride pitfall. Don't dig yourself into it. But go watch last week's video. As far as um, if switching planes, should we always read the entire POH for that specific aircraft? What information should we focus on? I am going to give you the same advice I gave Ella, our seven year old, a few weeks ago. Ella um, wanted to join ballet. And apparently ballet is like a big deal. I didn't realize, I thought it was like you drop your kid off and you pick them up for ballet. You have to try out for ballet. It, it's apparently that competitive now. And she's seven, right? It, so I told her, I said, Ella, and I promise this will all relate. If you want to make this ballet team, you need to know every single rule and every single thing that they're, they're judging you against. So she got the, the ballet for the ballet academy rule book and it was only 12 pages or something. And she read everything. It was how to do her hair. It was how to dress. It was how to manners. It was how to do this. And I made her read the entire rule book cover to cover. And guess what? Ella made the ballet team. When you were hopping in a new airplane, you're reading that POH cover to cover. And you know, funny thing, I'm looking, I don't know what airplane I'm looking for yet, but I'm looking for a new airplane. I need a faster airplane. Like just going, we're doing a lot of like Ocala to Naples because of this Rexair uh, investment. And we're just doing a lot of Ocala to Naples trips. I just need a faster airplane for, you know, Magda, the kids and I, and sometimes an MZRA team member or two. And I don't quite know what that is just yet, but I can tell you, I, I was on a, um, you, many of you know, I was on a Meridian kick for a while. I read, I, I could show you, I've got the entire M600 POH digitally on my phone. It's highlighted everything else. Then lately I've been on a Cessna 421 kick. I got a Cessna 421 uh, for the few years I was looking at. C model, POH, reading about it, reading the forms about how does that airplane fly? What does it act like? Asking in the nation, all of these things. So you can focus on those things, right? So absolutely, yes. I want you to read that cover to cover. That, be that becomes your nightly reading um, with all of that. You, you got to, like Dr. Bill said, don't let a faster airplane get ahead of you. Well, a faster airplane will get ahead of you if you don't have the knowledge because you didn't read all the emergency procedures, you didn't study all it. And Travis, you're right. There are so many free POHs online as a PDF. Maybe, and you know this, I am, um, I'm big into the things you speak, you manifest, right? Maybe you want that Cirrus or whatever it is. Why don't you go, go, 
get a free SR22 POH and just start reading it. You may be buying, Coach Ray, you may be buying that Cirrus. It may not be here for three years. I want you reading that SR20 POH, and I want you to learn everything you can about that airplane. That's how you manifest those things into success. And John Dela Cruz, thank you. He also said, don't forget about the boat. It'll be a 421 with a boat. C rank, preferably Magna. My birthday's coming up, just so you know. Um, anyways, questions. Questions, did I miss any questions? Miss? Uh, any, any comments? Oh, um, can I go up just a little bit? What am I, what am I? Eddie, there's Eddie. And Eddie, I still wanna hear more about your Thinking Rich movie connection, by the way. Um, a member of the 421, all these, there's the Twin Cessna community. Uh, what's the group, what's the Sears group we're in, Magda? Not COPA, I mean, COPA's a group too, but Sears owner, it's, yeah, I guess it is the COPA, it's the COPA Facebook group. And there's another one too, like there's all these Facebook industry specific or airplane specific Facebook groups. You can do all of those sort of things uh, as well. So, um, Cub on Floats or Mallard, Bill Campbell and Eric Pittman say. I need speed, speed. Uh, Cub on Floats is the opposite of speed. Very cool, but opposite of speed. All right, other questions, other comments. Danielle says, Think and Grow Cirrus. I, I like that. Next book, next book. Other questions, other comments. Again, we are here to serve you all. Um, I'll, I'll watch, I'll watch for those. Lawrence, are we doing a screening of Top Gun Maverick? Am I Maverick in that, in that situation? That's a big responsibility. Um, when's it coming out? I, I seriously want to do a Top Gun 2 M0A meetup. It's on my list. So someone tell me, someone tell me, oh, it's in 20 days? Is that real, Magda? Will you Google that real quick? How, the, how did they go from delayed for two years to coming in 20 days? Can we throw a, a, a thing together? Oh my goodness. This is, wow. How, how did you guys all know it was the 27th except me? You guys gotta keep me in the loop. I don't, we don't have cable. And I barely get on Facebook. I haven't even seen Eric Deagle's story just yet. He had to send me a message to tell me it even happened. Um, the 27th, wow, all right. Somebody needs to message me somebody with a movie theater that's gonna let, it doesn't have to happen on the 27th, but it needs to happen relatively soon. Somebody on here knows some, it's kind of like that, how close are you to Kevin Bacon kind of thing. Somebody watching this right now knows somebody that knows somebody that owns a movie theater. And I need to know that somebody because we need to rent it out to watch top. I'm not, this is, I am not even kidding. If you know somebody who knows somebody who owns a movie theater, you need, you need to message us ASAP as possible, as Michael Scott would say. That was a joke. Um, all right. So anyways, because um, we're running out to do, uh, do a preview with all of that. Eric Deagle, work on it. Make magic happen. Um, John, a you know someone has an AMC or you own AMC? That's why that's just, just, I mean, Mark Cuban owns Landmark Theaters. Does somebody on here know Mark Cuban? Call up Marky Mark and his funky bunch and ask him. I mean, I'll go on Shark Tank and I'll ask him. That's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. All right, figure it out, figure it out, and uh, and we will. I don't care where it is. Vicky Mackey's going to want it in Alaska. Um, Tina says make it a drive-in. I, I don't care. I'll be in a rental car if it's somewhere else in a drive-in. I'll be in Coach Ray's truck. I, I don't care. Um, but somebody make it happen. Facebook message us. Instagram message us. Do something, and and we will um, we'll make it. We'll make it happen. Um, Red Carpet Premiere is on YouTube. Wait, they're gonna do a, could we all watch it together on YouTube? That could be cool too. Uh, all right, let's, Eddie, you're, you got movie connections. Let's work on this. Let's, let's work on this team. Let's make all this happen. Um, are there other questions? Um, Eric Pittman, good point. Goes, a lot of movie theaters you can rent out for any, <laughs> any reason. They're trying to recover money. You're right. You're right about that. Um, all right, Eddie, Eddie is in Maui. Who wants to who wants to go to Maui to do it? Magda, Maui? Yeah. Eric Pittman, Maui? Who's up for going to Maui for the the uh wow. I mean, I was hoping a little closer than Maui, but <laughs> but I mean we can make we can make Maui work. Jeez. Um, all right, let's talk. Jim Huggins wants to know when is this coming back? I don't have a definite date just yet. I need to go love on my family. Love on this business, love on all the things we've been entrusted with, but we will be coming back. And, and that's why I wanna share. This is episode 106. This is the season finale of In Flight Coffee. Season finale. 
This, this is not an end, but a beginning. A beginning of an awesome, probably seasonal show, probably work it through, you know, the winter, whatever it is. And, and that when summer break comes with school, we'll take a little summer vacation from it as well is kind of what we're thinking um, as well with that. So um, it is not an end, but a beginning. I am still here as your accountability partner. You still know how to reach out to us. We still post one video, well, really two videos every single week, uh, one podcast a week, one video a week as well. So subscribe on YouTube, follow us, like us here on Facebook, everything else so you get access to all this. Just in Flight Coffee is taking a little bit of a break. We're still gonna keep producing content. We're still gonna be on the online ground school webinars every Tuesday. Hey, do you follow us on Instagram? Instagram is controlled by Magda and I. So you, you want like behind the scenes stuff, it's all on Instagram and everything else um, as well with, um, with that. So, um, I, and I do wanna wish a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Hashtag Mother Aviators Rock. Um, I made that hashtag up, but it sounds good. It's going to be trending pretty soon. I have a funny feeling. Um, anyways, so happy Mother's Day to all our mothers out there. And thank you so much just for being so respectful to let, uh, let Magda and I take some time off. And I mean it. We're going to use this time to recharge. We're going to come back with new content. You know, one of my patterns that I, one of my good patterns that I broke was, uh, and Bill Campbell will tell you the power of this, I was reading, I was reading a book a week. And we've been so busy work-wise and everything else, I've kind of gotten away from that. So I am getting back to uh, getting back to reading a book a week, starting. As soon as we hang up here, I'm making, I'm probably gonna reheat this coffee because I didn't drink much of it. Apologize for that. Reheat that coffee, sit on my comfy chair that I call my rocket ship chair, because you kind of you sit back. It's one of those Herman Miller chairs, and you sit way back like a rocket ship. It's it's awesome. The kids, they're not allowed on it because it's daddy's rocket ship chair. Big ideas happen in the rocket ship chair. That's what it really is. So that's where I'll be the rest of the afternoon. Listen, 106 Saturdays in a row. That's a heck of a pattern. Thanks for letting us pause this good pattern. And I promise you this good pattern will come up again very, very soon. If I missed your question, just send it to us again. Send us a Facebook message. Send us a support ticket, whatever, an Instagram message, whatever you need. Myself and the team, we are here to serve you. If you need ground school, don't forget us. M0ATrial.com. There's a reason. We're the best, well, I have a bias, the best online ground school out there. Until I see you all again, some of you all see on Tuesday ground school members, but everybody else, you were called, you were made to live life more abundantly. So I'd ask you, how are you gonna be more abundant, more, more stable, more fruitful, more blessed the next time I see you? Because I can't wait uh, to hear about all the amazing things that are happening in your life and the lives of those around you. Have a blessed, abundant, just prosperous few months. I'll see you all for in-flight coffee in just a few months. Ground School members, I'll still see you on Tuesdays. Have a good one, everybody. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great summer, everybody. I'll see you.